Let's take a look at the grouped data questions. So question one, we need to make a group frequency table to organize this information, which is the ages of people going to the cinema. So it's quite a spread going from nine up until 75. So very young to quite old. The most important thing is do not have categories that overlap. So you couldn't have a zero to 10 year olds and then a five to 12 year olds, because if you're seven years old, you belong to both categories. Um, think about the context. What, what would be an appropriate age category? Um, you know, you could do zero to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30 groups of 10 years. You don't want to do too many groups. You wouldn't, so I wouldn't do zero to five, six to 10, 11 to to 15 because then there'd be lots of groups with the zero in. I would say something sensible for ages might be or well, zero to 18. That's quite a key age category. Then the next group might be 19 to, I don't know, 25 or 19 to 30. doesn't really matter. 31 to 40 might be fine. 41 to 50, 51 to 65 and then you might just want to have a final one which is anyone who's older than 65 um, and then just work out well how many people fit into each category so it doesn't have to be 0 to 18 19 to 30 you could do 19 to 25 it's entirely up to you uh, now in the mark scheme what they've done is they've done it in uh, 0 to 10 11 to 18 19 to 35 36 to 60 so that's a quite a big age category but that's fine because there's only four people in it if they broke it down to 36 to 50 and then 51 to 60 then we'd only have a couple of people in each and maybe it's easy just to lump them all together the key thing is the age categories or the categories don't overlap and also the key thing is the number of people is correct according to the information given question number two all we need to do is put the information in the table in a bar chart so there are going to be one, two, three, four, five bars in total going up to various heights. Now, the key thing with the bars is they are all going to be exactly the same width and there's going to be a space between them and the space between all of the bars is going to be equal as well. So let me just draw in my uh, horizontal line. So the first bar, I'm not worked out what the height's going to be yet, but it's uh, that's the zero to 10. So this is going to be the width of all of my bars. I'm going to put a small gap in between. The gap could be the same as the width of the bars. It doesn't matter as long as the bars have equal widths and the gaps between the bars are of equal width. That's not quite the same. So I've not drawn it brilliantly here. This is 11 to 18 gap, which should be the same as the gap here. Another bar again, 19 to 35, the same width as all the others. Another small gap, which is the same as the other gaps, ideally. Um, then my next bar, 36 to 60. Again, widths of the bars consistent, another space, space is all consistent, and then my final bar, which is the 60 plus category. Now for the scale up the side here, I need to go, uh, it would be, it'd be crazy to do a scale going from zero to 100, because we only need to go as far as 19. So I'd probably go as far as 20. So that would be 10, 15, five again you'd be more precise you'd be using a ruler so the zero to ten goes up to twelve so there's ten so twelve would be a little bit above that there we go eleven to eighteen would be sixteen so that's just above the fifteen there again looks much better with a uh, pencil and ruler nineteen to thirty five is nine so that's going to be just below the ten so something like that uh, 36 to 60 is 19 so that's almost all the way to the top here and 60 plus is 6 and we are done so let's just compare this to what they've uh, shown us in the mark scheme as you can see the gap is consistent well there's a gap between all bars and they're all um, all the gaps are consistent. They've also put a gap before they even put in the first bar, which I didn't do, but I don't, in my opinion, that's not so important, but there, I would definitely put a gap between all, between the bars. But the key thing is the gaps have to be the same. The other thing, the width of the bars is consistent throughout. It's one, two squares, two squares, two squares wide, two squares wide, 
two squares wide. And as you can see, zero to 10 goes up to 12, 11 to 18 goes up to 16, 19 to 35 goes between eight and 10. So presumably that's nine, which it is 19 and six. So that is a perfect way to do the bar graph for that data there. For question number three, we need to make a grouped frequency table. So again, we just take a look at the values. What are we dealing with? We're starting at zero. We're going up to 24 and it's goals scored. So you might want to have a, um, a table which is zero to five, six to 10. Make sure the most important thing, I can't stress this enough, is that the categories don't overlap. 11 to 15, 16 to 20, maybe 20 to 25 or maybe 20 plus. You might decide that you want a category which is for zero goals and then a category for one to five, perhaps that's also fine. There's no right or wrong way as long as you don't overlap the categories, that's absolutely fine. And then just have a look, right? How many people did score zero goals? So that's one, two, three. How many got between one and five? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so these numbers need to be accurate uh, and in agreement with the data here. Um, in the mark scheme, what they've done is they've done zero to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20 and 20 plus. And these numbers do work with the data we've been given, but that's not the only solution. Um, as I say, you could, you know, you could do zero to three, four to seven in groups of three. That would be equally, equally valid and not a problem at all. Question number four. So what we need to do is create a grouped frequency table using the data. So all we're going to do is uh, between z zero to 60, 61 to 90, 91 to 121, 120 even, otherwise we would have overlapped, 121 to 150, 151 to 180, and then 180 plus, and zero to 60 is two, three, five, 10, eight and six and of course if you just tabulate it stick it in a box do some lines make it look a little little nicer and put some headings on there as well which would be um, completion time and here would be number of runners done so how many runners took part in the race so that is going to be all of these numbers added together and that comes to a total of 34. And which time period contain the most runners? Well, we can go off our table or the bar chart. Which bar is highest? It's this one here. 10 runners were between 121 to 150 minutes. Question number five, we need to create a grouped frequency table for this information. So what I would do is look for the uh, biggest and smallest value, um, so 180 to 11 pounds, I know to 15 pounds. So what you might want to do here is to include zero pounds to um, two pounds and then two pounds and a penny. Be careful, don't put two pounds again because if something is exactly two pounds then it technically fits in both categories. Two to four, four pounds and a penny to six pounds. Um, perhaps you think this is going to be too many, so you might want to change it to zero to five and then five pounds and a penny to 10 pounds, 10 pounds and a penny to 15 pounds and then 15 pounds plus. It doesn't really matter. All of these are absolutely fine. The most important thing is to make sure that your groups don't overlap, overlap, make sure that you're vaguely sensible. So it'd be fairly stupid to do a group that was zero to a pound, one pound and a penny to two pounds, two pound and a penny to three pounds, because that's not really helpful. You'll end up with as many groups as there are um, t-shirt prices. The whole point is just to sort of clump some of them together. Um, so you want a reasonable number of categories, but not an excessive number. So perhaps four or five would be appropriate here, but whatever you, whatever works really. Um, so something along these lines would be fine. The key thing, other than making sure that there's no overlap, is to make sure that if you've chosen zero to five pounds, or how many are between zero to five pounds, that's one, two, three, four, five. So make sure you include five not four or six, make sure you get it right, basically. Now in the solution, they've uh, done it in groups of uh, two pounds, 
Um, so zero to two, two pound one to four. So there's no overlap, um, but you could have used fewer um, categories if you'd wanted to, but it's entirely up to you. Question number six. So uh, we're looking at uh, mileages to the nearest thousand. So we are going from two all the way up to 59. So this is gonna be uh, a bit more challenging. So what you might wanna do is just, let's go from zero to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, and then maybe just do a 50 plus category, or you could do a 50 to 60, since I don't believe anything, sorry, 51 to 60, because 50 to 60 would cause an overlap. And now let's just make sure we get the numbers correct. So here we would need to put um, a title, which is uh, miles per thousand, and here F for frequency, do a nice little table. How many between zero and 10? Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many between 11 and 20? Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, five, 21 and 30, one, two, three, four. Between 31 and 40 is one, two, three. 41 to 50 is one, two, and one in the 50 plus. That seems pretty sensible to me. Of course, you could have um, had fewer categories or more categories, as long as the categories don't overlap, and as long as the numbers in the frequency matches with the information that has been given, then that's absolutely fine. 